Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today is all about X570. More specifically, this, the Meg X570 Ace from MSI. Let's have a look. So let's start things off by looking at the box. Uh, in typical kind of MSI fashion, typical MSI styling, um, kind of says and gives you all of the information that you need on the front of the box. So uh, great big kind of view firsthand of the board. So you can see exactly how, I guess potentially it's gonna look with kind of the subtle bit of RGB lighting on this kind of infinity mir mirror kind of area here, uh, as well as you know what the general sort of styling of the board is, how many slots it has, all that kind of stuff. Now the main thing with this obviously being X570, uh, we've got the branding over here, is that it has uh, Lightning Gen 4, which is all down to uh, PCI Express 4.0, as well as uh, obviously as you can see here, the AMD Ryzen 3000 desktop ready uh, sort of logo. So you will actually see this on very various boards, obviously all X570 boards, um, but it does sort of denote that it is ready for the new third generation processors, but as we can see, it will accept Ryzen uh, second gen processors as well. Now, moving the box around is where we kind of find a little bit more information on the Meg X570 Ace. So it just goes through, I guess, some of the main features because some of the features are kind of specific to the Meg range, which includes the Ace as well as the Godlike, and some are just, you know, generally specific just to the Ace. So we have in terms of, uh, at least um, network. Uh, we have 2.5G plus gigabit LAN with Wi-Fi 6. Uh, we have the Mystic Light Infinity Mirror, which does look very, very cool, I've got to admit. Uh, the Lightning Gen 4 solution with the M.2 PCI Express giving us extra bandwidth, uh, which is obviously down to the new X570 chipset. And then we have the board um, itself and a few other things. So Core Boost uh, for obviously, you know, um, delivering the, I guess the, the best uh, cleanest power that we can to the board uh, for, you know, pushing your, your processor just a little bit further in terms of overclocking. And then we have Game Boost as well as the Frozer heatsink as well. And just a few sort of general specs. So opening up the box, um, I am gonna sort of, you know, uh, deter away from, um, from looking at the board just yet. So if we put the board just down to the side, I just wanna sort of go for accessory wise, what we get just really, really quickly. So um, driver CD that pretty much no one ever uses because it makes sense to go and get the latest and greatest drivers from the website. Uh, thank you for choosing MSI product. Uh, they have kind of this promotion thing going on at the moment where you review, reward and win. Um, so that's always exciting. You know, you can always win kind of free stuff, swag, Steam vouchers, that kind of stuff. Quick install guide. Uh, we have the normal sort of user guide, uh, which has got a little bit bent inside there for some reason. And then we have um, some kind of marketing bump, I guess, just sort of going through some of the other key MSI products that are out in the market and some cables as well, um, sort of, sorry, cables, some labels for your cables. Um, so yeah, you can basically just kind of, you know, denote what your SSD is, what your hard drive is, that kind of thing. Just, you know, really nice sort of having that. So we got all that. Then we have a bag, which is where we kind of get the main goodies. Now, there are a few things that we get in here compared to sort of say other boards from MSI that aren't sort of in the Meg range. Obviously, you're not gonna get as much as what you'd get in a Godlike, but still, you know, quite a, quite a decent amount of stuff. So we have um, M.2 screws. So we've got one, two, Three, so three M.2 screws. Obviously, there is three um, M.2 slots on there. Uh, Connector-wise, we've got our addressable uh, cable. We've got a SATA cable, of which one is straight and one is right-angled. We have a Wi-Fi antenna uh, with two connectors on there. Another set of SATA cables, one right-angled, one straight. And then other cables. So we've got a connector for connecting up Corsair uh, RGB devices. So this is pretty cool. And I will show you that on the board as well where that connector is. Uh, as well as this, which uh, goes into your um, three pin addressable header. So straight away, we know that there's plenty of kind of options for RGB. So let's put all that to one side and move on to the board. So the board itself, um, first thing you're gonna notice is a really nice kind of color scheme. Some people aren't going to like the kind of black and gold accents, but I actually quite like it. I think it kind of gives off a bit of a premium feel to it. Um, yeah, personally it looks really nice. ATX form factor, of course, so nothing really out of the ordinary. Everything kind of makes sense, but they have kind of taken things a little bit further. So starting with the CPU socket, obviously we, are, we have got AM4, um, an AM4 socket. So that means we do have support for second gen and the new third gen uh, Ryzen processors, which I can't really talk too much about due to NDA. Um, around there, you can see that we have plenty of phases. So this is actually 
and this is something I'm really excited about, 12 plus two plus one. So we can see that I think there's like eight down here, uh, another four over here, then we've got the plus two, and then just nestled up here is another one. So for providing kind of clean, stable power, especially when overclocking, this is gonna be absolutely fantastic. And to get you that power, you are looking at two eight pin connectors. So being a meg board, obviously it is aimed at overclocking and things like that. MSI really have kind of thought about, you know, the, the power delivery to the new third generation processors of which I haven't even got in my hands at the moment. I'm still waiting on delivery for, but um, really hoping to sort of, you know, put it into this board and see how far it can be pushed. Okay, so another kind of unique thing with this board that uh, I guess had to be done because of the X570 chipset is the fact that it has got an active fan on here. So you may remember sort of seeing things like fans on the old N-Force 4 days, but we are told that these are very, very, very much improved and they're not going to be really, really whiny and be on all the time. So MSI actually have the patented Zero Frozer design. So that basically means that um, this fan, if it needs to, can actually go into either a low state or turn completely off which is really really nice now what they've actually had to do because the x570 chipset is i guess noticing that it has a fan is maybe going to run a little bit hotter they've had to sort of think about what they're doing with the cooling so you can see that we do have kind of this large heat sink here another one over here with a nice meg branding on it and then we have kind of this whole unit which kind of merges in and has a really nice style to it but you can probably see if i move sort of around here uh there's a kind of a start of a heat pipe here and that heat pipe goes all the way up and you can see that it joins into that heat sink there, goes across and then goes all the way down into that active fan solution. So yeah, they've definitely sort of thought about what they want to do in terms of the cooling and sort of design and stuff there. Moving on kind of, I guess the only other part of the cooling that I really want to talk about is the fact that this kind of goes into the IO shield, has this infinity mirror on there as well. And I'll probably power it up in a minute and sort of show you, you know, how the lights look and, and that. We do also have, you know, uh, a heat sink coming down here for the audio capacitors. And then we've just got the, uh, the lightning gen 4 M.2, um, which again, I think is like an MSI patented design that what they use for the, what they call it, the Frozer Shield, I think it is, or the Shield Frozer. So yeah, really nice design there. Uh, in terms of memory, you can see that we've got four slots. Uh, I did have sort of a brief look at the specs earlier. Looks like pot potentially, depending on the processor that you use, you're gonna be able to sort of get um, up to 128 gig and it's gonna support speeds, I believe, of 4,533 megahertz sort of out of the box, which is astronomical. And you've probably seen the leaks recently where we have sort of seen that uh, people are achieving sort of 5,100 megahertz um, on air on X570 boards. So really kind of a really strong memory controller, I'd say we're looking at with the new Ryzen uh, third gen processors. Uh, in terms of sort of other things on the board, uh, we have got quite a few connectors. So up here, you can see that we have got uh, various fan headers. So we've got a CPU fan header and also a water pump uh, fan header down the side you can see we have one two three system fan headers and then down this end of the board there are another two as well so nice locations for them as well kind of around the board I hate it when motherboard manufacturers put like a fan header like here or a power connector to give extra power to your PCI Express lanes really really frustrating stuff so kind of yeah good good job on that I guess in terms of other sort of, you know, connectors on the board, we are looking at a USB uh, 3.1 uh, round here and also another one at the bottom. And then there is a type C there as well. Obviously for legacy use, there is two USB 2.0 ports as well. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. Now I did mention earlier, this is a Meg board and there's only two boards on the X570 range that are actually in the Meg range, which is this, which is the Ace, the more affordable kind of compared to sort of Z390 but you have to remember with the X570 chipset we are getting sort of some new features that we haven't seen you know from Intel at all PCIe Gen 4 and things like that and the extra USB um, but kind of my point there is because it is part of the Meg range it is aimed at sort of overclockers so we have got a few connectors specifically for overclockers and buttons and things like that so we have our debug LED which is always handy for troubleshooting uh, and then down the bottom you can see that we have our power and reset as well as the game boost button or game boost knob which really confuses me because it goes up to 11 but not in increments of one so it sort of goes like one two four six eight ten eleven so yeah bit weird but you know I'm sure they have their reasoning behind it. Uh, other connectors on the board, you can see that we have an addressable uh, RGB connector down here. 
There's the kind of bog standard um, four pin RGB header and then the little Corsair connector that, um, that I spoke about earlier. Other than that sort of connector wise, nothing really out of the ordinary. We've got a few things down there to sort of light the board up, your usual kind of TPM connectors, um, front panel audio, all that kind of stuff. So moving over to sort of, I guess, the PCI Express lanes, which is one of the key important things of an X570 board because of, as we know, PCIe Gen 4. So we have got three M.2 slots. So we've got one up here, one down here, and one down there. Now, I am under NDA, but I'm pretty sure this is common knowledge, so I'm gonna say it anyway. But the X570 chipset actually gives you access to two um, PCIe Gen 4 M.2 kind of connectors or slots, or gives you that bandwidth. Whereas the third one, will actually come from the third generation processor. So be warned, if you are using an X570 chipset baseboard like this one, but you are using a second generation Ryzen processor, you're gonna lose out on some of the functionality. So it's def definitely worth keeping that in mind. Very much like if you bought a third generation processor and was using it on a B450 motherboard instead of X570. So the, the key combination, I guess, is third generation with X570, much like this board that we've got here. So yeah, you can obviously do uh, RAID with this as well and other storage connectors just to sort of show you. Around the side we have got four SATA ports which support, support RAID 0, 1 and 10. So kind of what you'd expect I guess. Uh, PCI Express uh, connectors, we have three X16 slots. So we've got one up here which is X16 speeds, one down here which operates at X8, and another one down there at X8. Now, it does support SLI as well as Crossfire, and if you are using these two slots, they will operate at X8 and X8, whereas if you're using the top one, it'll be X16, X0, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, it has got the patented, again, patented uh, MSI kind of steel armor, much like, actually, and I didn't mention this earlier on the memory slots, you can see. Firstly, it adds kind of, you know, electrostatic uh, protection or EFI uh, kind of protection. And secondly, it looks pretty damn cool uh, across the memory slots and down here. It just adds a bit of, you can see as I move the camera, a little bit of bling to it. So really, really nice looking there. And of course, we do have two X1 slots as well for your kind of USB network and other kind of expansion cards that aren't, you know, uh, graphics cards, that kind of thing. Other than that, there's not really much else to sort of say about the board that um, I want to sort of mention now, purely because we do have a review coming of this, and I will be going sort of through this in a lot more detail, probably a lot slower as well, and just sort of, you know, giving you kind of a rundown on everything, and obviously they're more important benchmarks. The only other kind of area that I want to look at is the rear I.O., so I'm just going to flip the board down, put it on the desk, and we can talk about the connectors that are on the rear of the board. Right, so rear I.O. wise, this is something I kind of have been begging brands to do for so long, and you only really see it on their top end flagship board. But as you can see, we have a built in I.O. shield. So I guess everything now in the Meg range. I haven't actually checked out the rest of the MSI range, but I'm guessing it's only gonna be this and the Godlight that are gonna have this kind of built in I.O. shield. But it's a really nice touch. The amount of people I know who have built computers and forgot to put in their I.O. shield plate and just basically have left it out because yeah, what's the point in taking everything out again? But I digress, uh, moving on, you can see that there are a few kind of, you know, new features that we haven't seen on boards um, sort of in the past, mainly from MSI. So straight away, you can see, see that we've got a clear CMOS button. So for overclockers or people who are troubleshooting, it's easier to press this button over here than to try and delve into your system and kind of, you know, find the connector or the CMOS battery and reset it from there. We also have a flash BIOS button, which is really, really handy to have. Um, something that, again, for overclockers or people troubleshooting, it's just a nice sort of piece of functionality to have and it allows them to separate the ace board from kind of you know the lower end board saying look if you buy an ace then you get this extra functionality over this over that it just kind of you know warrants spending that extra money for it uh, we have the two wi-fi connectors which i believe are wi-fi 6ax200 uh, for legacy sort of use which again overclockers you can sort of see a theme here with this board. We have a PS2 uh, mouse keyboard combo port. We've got some USB 2.0 here as well. And this one is actually denoted for the flashing the, of the BIOS in conjunction with the button that I spoke about. We've got plenty of other USBs. So we have our sort of, you know, 3.1 um, Gen 2 as well as Gen 1, I believe. Uh, so we've got type A, type C, um, lots of USB basically. Uh, in terms of the ethernet ports, we do have two. Now in the past with the Z390 ACE board um, from MSI, you did notice that it had killer ethernet. Well, they've actually gone away from that now. So uh, these are both uh, technically Intel. Uh, one of them is um, your, your kind of typical standard gigabit, whereas the other is 2.5G. Uh, so again, you're getting sort of, you know, that slightly better sort of throughput and extra bandwidth. And then audio wise, um, 
typical sort of MSI audio. They've put a lot of money, a lot of R&D into their audio through their Audio Boost HD, uh, HD the acquisition of Nehemic 3 and, and everything there. So you can see that we've got these gold-plated connectors as well as an optical SP diff. And that, my friends, is pretty much this board in a nutshell. There's not really too much else I can kind of say without going down the performance route and obviously I'm still waiting on the CPUs to come through and when that arrives, which is probably going to be in the next couple of days, then yeah, we will get it sort of in there, get some really sort of nice fast memory in there, get an NVMe uh, PCIe Gen 4 drive in there and really go to town and show you, you know, what this board is all about. So yeah, let us know in the comments section below what you think of this board. Is it worth the money? When the Z390 Ace board launched, it was about 50 pounds cheaper than this, but it didn't have nowhere near the amount of features as this has got. Not just from the X570 chipset, but what MSI have actually sort of done, listened to their customers and actually done sort of from there. I'm really excited about this board. I think it's gonna be a nice little sweet spot for anyone who wants, you know, that little bit more. There is a godlike for anyone who doesn't need this amount of features. There are other boards in the stack. I think MSI have pretty much got you covered from every direction. So there you go, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you're watching this after the 7th of July, there is actually a review of this on the channel as well. And we do have a sort of written preview and we will have written reviews and stuff of this board as well. So there you go, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. See you later. Bye, bye, bye.